everybody, and welcome to another session of the Magic Master Summit. I'm your host, David Da Vinci, and today we're going to be talking with Barry Friedman on one of my favorite topics, and that is getting more gigs. You know, this whole thing is about, you know, everything from just making your show better uh, to having just more professionalism, scripting your show, but now we're going to dive into the deep nitty-gritty of just getting more gigs. Uh, so with us today is Barry Friedman. Welcome to the event. Thanks for joining us. David, thanks so much, man. It's great to be here, and, and congratulations on organizing so much uh, in the magic world in the magic summit there's a, a you know a lot of information out there and it's, it's great that you've gathered some of the best people to talk and help people uh, navigate the path well it's been a honestly a nightmare of uh, time commitment I didn't realize it was going to take like 400 hours of my life but uh, it's been awesome I've been learning a ton and uh, it's been worth every minute so yeah that's all right. You don't have any. Uh, yeah, I imagine you don't have any kids, right? I do have a three-year-old. Yeah, she's actually. Oh my gosh! And four hundred hours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay wow. Yeah. I was thinking, hey, you're yeah. young and uh, on ships. You probably don't have any kids, but well, there you go. It's all right. Uh -huh. Now, for people that don't know who you are, where you come from, uh, give us a brief background of why sure. they need to be listening to you right now. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, 1982. Uh, Daniel Holzman and I started the Raspini Brothers. I'm sure a lot of people have heard that name over the years. Um, we're still together, still doing corporate dates uh, once in a while, although I've uh, tapered back to go on to chapter two of my life, and I'm loving everything about that as well. Um, Showbiz Blueprint has been a, a changed entertainers' lives around the world. It's a group coaching program I run once a year, and we're in week eight of it right now of the 2016 session. So it's uh, jamming good. I love it. I've worked with entertainers. Entertainers have been a part of my life since I was... Uh, I think I first went on the road in 1982, so I was 20 years old, and um, yeah, it's just been wonderful connecting and uh, and then taking everything that I've learned about show business, rolling it into group coaching, private coaching. I started a project back in 2009 called Get More Corporate Gigs. Some of the folks listening to this were probably members of that, and um, it's been fun. It all started, all the education stuff started when this thing was inserted into my collarbone after a uh, heroic flight off my mountain bike in 2007. Oh. And, uh, I was talking to my wife and uh, we were trying to figure I couldn't move my hand for about six months with the re recuperation, the surgeries and everything to get it back to working. I always keep that on my desk as a great reminder. Jeez, uh, that's <laughs> but uh, it's funny, my wife, I was talking to her and said, wow, what if I can't juggle anymore? You know, after 25 years, I got used to the money and the uh, lifestyle of that. And, she's, and we started thinking about what else I'm good at. And she said, well, one thing you're really good at is booking a juggling act for a lot of money. And I thought, <laughs> well, there's something in that. So uh, right? that... That set sail to uh, my first project, Get More Corporate Gigs, and that ran for a few years. I've taken that off the market. And then Showbiz Blueprint, I've run that uh, two or one or two times a year since 2009, and um, it's in its 10th session right now. So, yeah. Awesome. Just, that's what I'm doing. Oh, and in the juggling side, over 2,500 corporate uh, appearances, corporate entertainment since 1990 has really been the focus. But before that, opening acts for anyone you could imagine, from Robin Williams to uh, Roseanne Barr and everyone in between. And uh, six TED Talks without ever having cured or invented anything, as they like to say when they introduce us there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. I first um, reached out to you eight weeks ago, as you're actually probably about 10 weeks ago, as you're right in the middle of doing your launch for, mm -hmm. um, for your coaching program. So. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on board here because I'm literally actually filming this on satellite internet. So those of you that work on ships, got to be looking at this as like, okay, how's that happening? Uh, well, it's happening at 2.15 a.m. in Bermuda. So uh, thank you for staying up late with me and, uh, and banging this out. I got out easy. It's only 10 p.m. in California. Uh, yeah, it worked perfectly. Yep, well, let's great. jump into uh, to, you know, the essentials of just getting more gigs. When somebody yeah. sits down and they say, I've got an act, I've got a good act, how in the world, where do they start when you first take your coaching program and your students through this? Where do you even start with, let's yeah. get some more gigs? Yeah, you know, I drew a great distinction, a lot of which you'll handle uh, by going through the summit here. I really assume that people have an act that's marketable. It's something I've never wanted to touch is the uh, stage act itself. I've been part of a team act, the Raspini Brothers, since 1982, and my partner is uh, extremely creative on that side of it, the stage, the choreography, the routine, the comedy, the customization. So I've been blessed in that way. And my world has happened in this office and I love it. I, we always had two different celebration points in, in our career. Mine was always like when we booked the uh, 10, 15, $20,000 corporate date and his was after, after the show killed. So we had double uh, <laughs> celebrations for each and it allowed us to focus very well on our own specialties. Um, 
so you know I'll come into this assuming that you have a good act that it's that it performs well that you know how to treat an audience uh, and then you sit down to try and market this thing and what are some of the big mistakes that entertainers make and these are age-old you know you see painters you see insurance agents you see uh, plumbers making the same mistake uh, and it's talking about who you are as if anyone in the world cares. Uh, the only f people who care about your accomplishments are you and your parents probably. Right. <laughs> uh, nothing kills a conversation with a prospect more quickly than you breaking into uh, where you learned magic, what your first trick was, who your influences were, what award you won. Uh, you may as well jump into their bedroom when they're sleeping at night and dump a bucket of cold water on their head. It, it's about that as, about that as f effective as that in building a relationship. Uh, so, you know, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about what's keeping them awake at night and how our services might be a fit. Uh, don't ever go into a conversation, a phone call, an email conversation, or website copy, assuming that you have any idea of what these people want. Although, uh, insiders, being customers, you do know what they want. But don't go into the conversation that way. Uh, the more you get somebody talking on the phone about what their uh, event's about, what they've used in years past, what their theme is, what they want their guests to uh, experience before, during, and after the event. The more you can get them talking about all that and a dozen more topics, uh, the better relationship you're going to have. And uh, believe it or not, folks, we're not in an internet selling business. We're in a uh, relationship business. So what we can do to build the relationships, uh, that's essential for building a uh, strong referral-based repeat customer business, which, uh, boy, I've going on three and a half decades of. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, let's back it up a little bit too. Sure, and and uh, I'd love that's... to hear your your suggestions on how somebody who, they've got this great show, they know that it works well, how do they find new clients? And I'll, I'll frame it like this. I've been on a cruise ship for um, more than two years. So I, I might be looking to branch out and try to, let's say, get some corporate gigs. How do I even go about finding who to contact yeah. and, and making sure that I'm getting to that right person before I even get into the whole booking process? Yeah. You know, you want to, uh, you want to come into these markets looking, feeling, smelling uh, like something they're used to booking. So there's a couple stumbling blocks that people will automatically hit if they're trying to sell to a corporate or a association market or any professional market and they have a, a videotape that shows them street performing. You know, avoid road bumps. We want to really do whatever we can to uh, look and feel like the market we're heading into. Um, if you're going to be working trade shows, have some footage of you at trade shows. And how do you get that? You have to reverse engineer it. We all have networks, uh, guaranteed. We all have a brother who works for HP or we have a cousin who works for uh, Google or something, you know, there's a lot of ways we can reach into our own network to get that initial footage. Uh, sometimes I tell people who are interested in entering the trade show market, study all you can about the trade show market. There's some great resources out there for, uh, for working the trade show. In fact, I'll make available to you, uh, everyone who's in the summit here, I'll, I'll uh, make public these articles. Um, I did a four part series on working trade shows and I'll make those available to all the listeners of this uh, awesome. as, a, Thank you. as a bonus, you bet. Um, just because we'll we're add that in the can we add that in the resource section here, Definitely. or do you want them to come to you to get that? Or no, we'll that put work? it right in the resources on your page. I don't. Perfect. I don't need the uh, the traffic. It'll come if it's right for me. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but yeah, you know. So we want to always reach into our network first, and I really strongly recommend. You're on a cruise ship. You can get uh, snippet footage. You can get testimonials. Um, clearly, your show will look like a cruise ship audience and a cruise ship stage for people who know that. But used properly with a well edited video. Um, you can get away with uh, telling a story through a voiceover, through pop-up captions, uh, having testimonials tell your story. Uh, the main mistake that people will make is not looking like a match for the market. And uh, boy, that's really tough to overcome. Uh, the best copy in the world won't convince somebody uh, of what they see on a videotape. Uh, but, oh no, but we do this too. You know, good copy is yeah. essential. Uh, good headlines. Uh, copy that, that speaks directly to what keeps that person awake at night? I mean, I know for sure if I'm gonna pitch myself to a trade show, I know for sure there's a trade show manager there who is uh, having a hard time sleeping in the months leading up to the final meetings about what's gonna happen at this trade show because they're afraid they're not gonna get as many leads as last year. They're afraid they're gonna be bored, that their uh, booth staff's gonna be looking like this at around noontime. Right. And 
So I know how to have that conversation with people that says, hey, don't let this happen to your booth, no matter what. You can't afford this. Um, and uh, boy, we can get into talking about pricing. We can talk about a million things. So, Yeah, well, clearly you understand uh, the, the other side of the conversation, and that seems to be the biggest takeaway from what you just said, is so, just really putting yourself in the booker's shoes and saying, what what does that person need, and then approaching it from that angle. Is that, yeah. am I repeating I, that correctly? I think that's wonderful. The closer you can meet them to where they're at, and you know where someone's at when they're booking a uh, after dinner at, for an award ceremony for, uh, what's this one I just booked today in San Diego, for uh, got like 600 people, um, and it's an insurance, they're financial planners. And they're having an after dinner thing and they're having spouses and kids there. So it's a total family after dinner show they want. And you know, I, I find all this stuff out and then I forget everything I've done. I don't worry about the awards I've won, the four time world juggling champion, the TED Talks, the anything. I just get them talking about. And one of the biggest questions you guys can ask your clients, what do you want your people to feel before, during and after your event? Not just your show, but the event. Because uh, a big secret is, we can branch out. We can become trusted advisors to people about their entire two or three day event because of our experience. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have to just be concerned. Yes, that's one hour they're not going to have to worry about about their three day agenda. But when you can start injecting, hey, have you guys thought of trying this? Or here's something I saw at a meeting last year that worked beautifully. Um, I mean, for, for a family event, I have all kinds of ideas. And uh, I gave a few to these people even after they booked us. And they're like, yeah, it's just remarkable the goodwill we can build a relationship. So. Awesome. Yeah. Now, now throughout your coaching program and everything that you do, what's what's one of the one themes, or there's going to be something that that stands out amongst amongst the others that yeah. really slows down somebody's career. Is there one thing that stands out in particular? Sure. Not having systems in place is a, a huge flaw that we have. Uh, us treating our business like we're anything less than a uh, a well greased machine, uh, trying to do everything ourselves. My gosh, uh, talented labor, talented assistants. I just hired a full-time project manager. I have my first time real full-time boy. I have a bunch of other businesses going on, not just for Raspinis. Um, in fact, I don't even think that guy knows I juggle, um, but uh, just doing the other <laughs> stuff I do. I uh, wrote a book uh, uh, last year called I Love Me More Than Sugar. I run a huge online program helping people with a 30-day sugar-free cleanse. Um, so, I mean, there's all kinds of business things going on, private coaching, group coaching. Uh, so, Trying to do everything yourself is insane. There are yeah. MBAs in the Philippines who can get you a database of every event happening in your community, in, in your region, in your market, in your niche. Um, don't work yourself. You know, this is, a crazy, this is a crazy thing that I don't know how it gets into an entertainer's head, but if I want it done, I have to do it myself. It's the smallest type of thinking in the entire world. And uh, you will never be bigger than yourself if you insist on doing everything alone. So it's beautiful. Automate. What can you do? I mean, I have in my Gmail, I use something called um, Mixmax. It's a beautiful plugin for Gmail. There's templates. There's uh, uh, tools that tell people, tell me when people open their emails. There's uh, surveys, polls, calendar appointments, all right in there that I can drop in emails. So, I mean, when someone calls me for a gig, it's not a, oh my God, what do I do now? There's funnels in place. You know, there, there are essential funnels that ent entertainers need to have. A pre-show funnel, a post-show funnel. Um, I didn't get the gigs funnel when you don't get the booking, when they give it to somebody else. You don't write those people off. There's a six-part funnel that you have to run those people through because they cared enough to call you the first time and you should be in their life for uh, six touch points before they book their event for the next year. Um, business Let's card talk a little funnel. bit more about these systems because uh, in, in business, and it sounds like you've kind of studied some of the similar things that I have. Uh, have you followed Evan Pagan's courses at all? Yeah, I've you know never. I, I've seen him around. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. So I've never really studied with him. But uh, yeah, <laughs> understood. Jeff what Walker. Now Jeff Walker, product launch formula. I'm uh, in a platinum group with him. I'm. Uh, I'm yeah. one of his case studies in his launch every year, and I love him. I mean, I. Uh, but I, I. It's the same thing, and I think this is a big tool for business. Uh, study mentors that you feel a connection with. Not that you have to talk yourself into up here, but someone in your gut intelligence that just feels like I want to follow this person. Yeah. Yeah. It's big. Well, well, back to what he was saying is that, that in business, and, and I mentioned this earlier, is there's there's five categories. There's you, your market, your marketing, your people, and your systems. <laughs> and your systems is usually, like you said, that part that just gets broken down and lost. Can we just take a few minutes here and, and cover some of the, maybe the top three systems that magicians or jugglers or ventriloquists or entertainers of any variety type should have in place maybe, and, and then maybe go a little bit deeper into those top sure. three? Sure. Um, 
Yeah, I don't want to do that. It's funny, these are all based on stuff that I teach so early, so fundamentally. Uh, but you know, I, I, let's, just do a, let's just do a view and open the hood on one of them. Um, I mentioned a handful of funnels. I think there's a, uh, a really important funnel that should happen the second uh, you're booked for a show. Um, and I like, I, I, I don't. And I'm, I'm gonna pause you there for a second here, but just because some people may not understand what you mean by a funnel. So yep. let's explain the funnel and then where you're going. Sure, it's just kind of another word for a system in a way. It's, a, it's something that happens every time. So you don't have to think about, gee, someone just booked me for a show. What do I do now? You know, so uh, perfect. Yeah, let me, let me. In fact, I'm going to bring one up on my website just so I can really run through one of the steps on these things. There they are. Man, I had somebody build this whole website for me, and it's so great. <laughs> Again, systems. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I, I didn't make this. Someone who made this, and it's so beautiful how it works. I'm like, oh, this is how I would have put it together. Okay, post booking funnel. This is a great one. This is something that I really. Uh, it's something I, I do instantly when someone uh, books a thing. I and I don't I don't perform. I mean, just so you guys go, wow, why is he having to look up his own funnels? Because I teach these things way more now. I was telling Dave before uh, this started. I'm down from about a hundred shows a year down to about five or six, maybe eight uh, on a big year now. Um, just because I only work for a couple of producers now who call me and say, Barry, there's no marketing involved. Say yes, and we can do this one. So it's uh, really good. <laughs> So uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I teach all these uh, funnels, but let's look at this one. This happens. Uh, this is a post booking funnel. So this is after you've booked the uh, the uh, the gig and you got the contract. So there's certain touch points that we put in to to uh, build anticipation to uh, you know keep the excitement rolling, uh, put off buyers remorse, give them a flavor of what you're going to be bringing to the show. Um, and this funnel happens really quickly, and it can be uh, set up using email tools that. Um, that where you schedule them in advance. I mentioned Mixmax. There's also one called Boomerang. Uh, all kinds of tools. Just things where you can program an email out to go out a certain date or time. Um, Letter me later or any CRM you use. Uh, some people use uh, Showbiz CRM or a new one that uh, Mike Carey's putting out right now called um, what's that one called? He's a forget, but he he built Showbiz CRM and he's cleaned it up and actually made it easy now to use. Uh, so, <laughs> nice. yeah, so it's a, uh, a series of uh, emails that go out. And I think there's, what, one, two, three, four, I think four in this uh, post-booking one. So this first one, uh, post-booking email, and this is uh, just a sample that I teach. Uh, so um, we'll see you in Palm Springs, and, and I'll just put something like that in my heading, and all the rest is ready to go, and I just plug in the name. So I'll say Daniel and I are so looking forward to bringing – previously unimaginable levels of energy and connection to Minneapolis at the, so such as such the hardware event. And it says, uh, you'll always have all the contact information that you need. It's listed below. If you have any questions or requests that come in between now and showtime at it on 8 PM at May 25th or whatever the date is. Um, so that's an email that's ready to go. Just those few things I'll fill in and schedule it for the time. Um, this one I'll shoot out right away after the, uh, booking. Um, the next on the subject, we scoured your website. Um, God, I need to make this text. And so these are all going out automatically after you make the booking, you put that system in place, you hit go, you don't think about it, yet it's keeping you in touch, in close personal touch, because sometimes, as, as you know and as many people watching this know, you may, you may book gigs that are two months, four months, six months, eight months, a year in advance, and you obviously want to keep in close contact with those people so that they're not worried about, hey, are you coming? Uh, I used to have a thing when I, when I did a lot of uh, school shows is I would always – I would send the contract or letter of agreement, and then I would follow up within, you know, the week ahead of time. I'd send them a written letter, yeah. or I'd give them a call as well and just say, hey, you know, I'm looking forward to this if you have questions. But it sounds like your system's a lot easier, and the concept of it I love as well. Yeah. Even if we don't dive into the exact specifics of each email, I think that gives a good point to people of, of how to keep in touch. Um, what sure. about, let's go a little bit deeper into why they might want to do that. What are sure. like, some of the benefits for that? The why is a... Uh the number one why is building anticipation, letting it get excited, uh, turning off buyer's remorse, letting them know that we're working. The, the second email is uh, the subject is we scoured your website. And basically in that one, I just kind of talk about, hey, we dug into your website. We see these couple products that are so funny. And I mean, I do this stuff, Dave, in five minutes maximum. I have, we have a uh, 12 or 14 question questionnaire that I, uh, that I send to a client as part of this uh, post-show funnel. 
And they fill that out, and that's the answers to all our customization. So there's 14 points of customization in our show, and every one of those is the answer. You know, when were they started? What year? What uh, what are some big personalities in your company? And some of their, uh, you know, some of their personality quirks that we could play with. Um, nice. You know, uh, what <laughs> city is your home base in? We always do some joke about that. Who's your competitor? And uh, what are some of your product names? What are uh, what makes a great day for some of your people who are going to be in the audience there? So questions like that. That's part of this uh, post booking funnel too, and it just keeps them involved. It keeps the anticipation up. Um, and then I, I think number it. three, yeah, number three, we say, hey, would it be cool if we recorded a thirty or sixty second audio commercial that you can put on your website or send to all your attendees? And then Dan and I get on the phone and we record. Or we just BS. We just uh, we just improv a funny commercial out about radiator parts or uh, hardware parts <laughs> or uh, what's going on in the uh, search engine business. Or, but we just we don't even have a script. We just talk about it. We do two or three takes, and the funniest one we send to them. But yeah, I've seen those things on uh, on their websites, going out in their emails. It just kills. But uh, again, That's awesome. building anticipation, connecting one. Um, oh, and then this is the last one in this funnel. I said this show of yours is under my skin. That's the subject line, and it says I woke up this morning and started laughing at an idea I had for your show. I read something on your website last week that my brain just transmuted into the perfect topper for an already hilarious routine we're going to be doing. Okay, I'm probably uh, going to need to write. Okay, what do I say? Okay, probably going to need to write and tell you about it. I don't even know why I wrote that. I guess. I, oh, I said I probably didn't need to write to tell you about it. Just know that we're going to arrive with a show that your audience will always remember. And let me know if you need anything else as the date approaches. Okay, and so that's yeah, that's the timing. Email one right after the booking. Email two five days after the contract sign. Um, email three seven days after the contract sign. And email number four, uh, four is 12 days after the contract signed. So, you know, I tell you, but stuff like that, systems like that, uh, post booking funnel is uh, powerful. And you guys should have these in place for a whole bunch of funnels. Yeah. Let's, let's look at one other funnel, like uh, sure. probably the people that don't book you. Um, that's a good what's one. that funnel look like? Yeah, that's a great one. Let me see. Let me see what. Because I imagine you, you need to look up, you know, or, or try to determine did they not book you because of your price, because of. Uh, Maybe your demo video was for for corporate gigs, and they wanted you for a school show, or maybe uh, you know you know maybe you're misrepresenting yourself and yeah. you doing demo videos. Or how do you handle that, and what's that funnel look like? Yeah, there's a lot of them, and a lot of times if you're working with producers, the truth is a producer isn't so concerned with you getting the gig; they're concerned with them getting the gig. You know, they're mm. pitching three or four acts out there. If you're working with an end client, uh, this is an ideal client. I wouldn't I wouldn't bug a producer with this because there's another series of. Uh, there's another series of email contacts you use throughout the year to stay in touch, a long-term nurture campaign for producers. Uh, this is really for an end client. And boy, anyone who has a website that does a good job of selling them should be getting inquiries to their website. And if they don't get the gig, put them into a, a didn't get the gig funnel. Uh, this one, first one, sent the day of the gig. I sent this, the, this goes out the morning of the gig when I didn't get it. And, it, and the subject is, hope it's a great night. Um, and then I kind of just use wording and just say, uh, Hope you have a great time tonight. You know, I hope the show goes off great. Um, you know, I have a whole email here. If, if it goes wildly unsuccessfully, call me for next year. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> if it goes wildly unsuccessful, right. call me for next year. Right, call me for next year. And then two days after the gig, uh, con subject, hey, I bet it was a hit. Or I hope it was a great show. I just kind of check in. I touch base and it says, I was just thinking about you in the show the other night. I have nothing but confidence that it was a grand slam and that you knocked it out of the park, looking forward to the opportunity when we can work together again. And that's it. There's uh, really no call to action. It's soft, if anything. I'm just saying, hope we can work together when uh, there's another chance. Um, how, how many times can you reference where that, that follow-up sales funnel on a didn't get the gig funnel has resulted in a sale? Uh, Do you have any countless, metrics on that? Hundreds of it thousands really? of dollars. Um, uh, yeah. Because as this thing starts to unwind, it's a... Uh, the, the last one comes uh, three to six months after the gig, and the timing on this one varies. It kind of depends on when they first contacted me, because that's what I know their timing was. But I will set that up for about a week before the amount of time before the gig that they uh, contacted me last year. And this one, um, I just have their name, and I say, wonder if you're booking the uh, you know, what, XYZ event again this year. Uh, here's what I bring to the table. Would love to be proposed for this gig again. Um, and here I'm showing that I stayed in touch, uh, that, that I remembered this that here's the information I had written down about it last year, and I write this email right, I, I wrote this email right after I find out I don't get the gig, so it's ready to go out. Um, and then another one goes out four or five days after that third email, 
uh, or we're going to do this, we're going to be bringing a surprise. What do I have here? Oh, is that, uh, we're going to do this, we're going to be bringing a surprise, we're going to use Google. Oh, and we're going to use Google Alerts. And we're going to use Google Alerts to kind of search what hap has happened in this company in the last year. And it's really simple to put in a, a search for uh, Samsung or, you know, whatever the company was. You know, what's happened with Samsung? And then I'll just put in some little piece of that. And I'll put this one in my calendar so that I go in and touch this one up. And I'll just say, hey, here's, here's something that's going on in your industry right now. Here's a routine. We'd love to perform for this thing. You know, and one of the big keys, Dave, and I'll offer this up without going into a ton of explanation, but you guys get into the mindset of talking to your prospects as if you already have the gig. Whoosh! I know that's a mind, that's a mind screw. That's a real big yeah. one. But don't ever talk about it if we get the gig or when we get the gig. Always come into these conversations with the mindset that um, we're going to be at your event and right now we're working out details. That will, uh, in an NLP way, in a subconscious way, in a subliminal way, give them a feeling of confidence that these guys have it. These guys have been doing this 30 years. You know, look at this list of clients. They're already talking to me as if they have the gig. And I never go in saying, if you hire us or if you want us, if we're there. I mean, the, one of the only ways I ever open to that is in a custom video proposal when I send one of those to a client. I'll say, your event's coming to the Phoenician uh, November 3rd. We're the Raspini Brothers, and we hope to see you there. I mean, that's about the only thing I'll ever say that doesn't sound like we already have the gig. Interesting. Now, one thing that stood out to me, because I, I found you through the Product Launch Formula book mm. uh, and, and started to read about you a little bit there and discover more about what you're doing and some of your, your other things, even the, the sugar-free cleanse, um, your mindset really stands out to me. And I want to see if you can touch on that. I know that that wasn't really the, the purpose of this call, but your mindset is different from a lot of people that I talk to. And uh, can you give some tips towards what somebody's mindset should be like, aside from... I already got the gig, but how can you help somebody build confidence and have the yeah. right mindset to be a full-time entertainer? Yeah, that's a good question. I will tell you uh, something you've probably read or maybe some of your uh, listeners have certainly read, but how you do anything is how you do everything. And I think it's very difficult to uh, be uh, conniving in your life or be uh, insincere, be out of integrity and then say, I'm going to run this business like I'm in integrity. So, you know, a mindset is really to look at the big picture of in your life. Where are you in integrity? Where are you living like a leader? Where are you living like a, a scared little person? Because that's showing up in your marketing. So if you can find the holes in your uh, relationships, in your personal life, you know, are you living uh, radically out of overweight and trying to pull off a business where you look kind of suave? That's a huge ass road bump. If you're way overweight, do a character that's you know works with that. Let's think John Panette. Don't die of a heart attack like he did. But I mean, <laughs> look at a guy who completely uh, was in con was congruent with his character. So look for places in life where you're uh, uh, out of integrity. And what can you do to clean those up? Are there relationships? Are there uh, personal habits? Are there business habits? Are you are you screwed with money? Because that comes through in your marketing too. That you're desperate. It's, uh, it's a whole package. It's very difficult to do one thing in a really clean way and live the rest of your life in a way that isn't uh, congruent. So a mindset piece uh, that I'll offer up, and it's, it's, it's work. It's life's work. It's a hero's journey, is to uh, be who you are uh, in your marketing is as who you are in life. And let people feel the congruency. Let people trust you uh, when you're building a relationship with them to, uh, to perform a show. Starting a relationship as performing a show, I'm telling you, Dave, I work with producers. This is amazing. Uh, this is shocking to some people, but I work with producers who I worked with their parents when they owned the business. Uh, I work with some producers <laughs> I've worked with in 1985, 86. Yeah. Uh, from long, wow, that's cool. Long term relationship building. It's very big. So I want to jump back to yeah. in the beginning, I mentioned you, your market, your marketing, your people, your systems, and you just touched on on you mm -hmm. uh, and how really fixing yourself and making sure that you're in alignment before you're even really, If I, I, I would say, and I don't know if you agree with this, but if you aren't working on you first, your market, your people, your marketing, your systems, none of that matters until you are actively, you don't have to be where you want to be because we should always all, all be wanting to get better all the time. But if you're not actively focused on how you can improve every day, every week, every month, every year with goals that are personal goals, uh, is it safe to say it's uh, going to be a lot more difficult if you aren't doing that? I'd, I'd say 
Yeah, I, I'd say that's completely safe to say. And I'd also say that uh, no one in the world has ever fooled themselves, fooled a client into booking them. You know, they may have once, but they never will again, and they won't get referrals. They won't get uh, lateral and vertical referrals. They won't be turned on to other divisions of the company. So you can fool someone into booking you, but uh, and I'm not saying anyone's bad, anyone who's listening to this, but I'm just saying if you ask for a mindset piece, look for congru congruency in your life uh, and, mm. and really look for helping clients. One of my favorite lines is, and guaranteed, everyone listening to this has had a client say, oh, we don't have that money or we can't afford you or whatever, however they want to word it. Use this line next time and just see how good it feels, see how clean you feel. Say, Sarah, I can't wait to do this show for you, and I want to do it at a time when neither of us have to compromise. <laughs> don't lower your price. Don't go to bat. <laughs> don't say I'll work less hours. Offer the opportunity to work together when neither of you have to compromise, and then offer them something wonderful. Say, I've been in this business 30 years, whatever your years are, but you know, I guarantee you I know someone who could knock it out of the park for you in a price range that makes sense to you. Do you want a couple names? That line alone. Awesome. Hey, hey, hold on a second. You know, maybe we can get money from the education budget. I, it's congruency, you know, it's service. And uh, I don't really care, but I don't want to lower my price ever, especially, and this is especially if I ever have to put my ass on an airplane again, I will never lower my price once. I just, I can't. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's too many years and too many miles. When you get that United Airlines million mile, mile flyer club, you never want to get on one unless you're full price. Oh. Jeez, and <laughs> that sounds brutal. <laughs> We're in a spot where we we relocate for you know six months out of t at a time or four months at a time, and even that, I'm just like, you know, our, my poor daughter, she's three now, and mm. and she's gonna probably you know be on a, in a serious relationship, and they'll want to take her out on a cruise, or she'll get married and want to go on a cruise, and say, no thanks, I've done you know a thousand fifteen. <laughs> Is she on the ship with you most of the time? Oh yeah, all the time. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's... Every week, so. We're, 24 seven there. In fact, my wife and I, at the time of this recording tonight, we tried to celebrate our 12 year anniversary. And actually our, our anniversary was July 10th today that I'm filming. This is the 11th. Awesome. Uh, we tried two nights in a row to go out for our 12 year anniversary and, and <laughs> she doesn't want to go to kids club. She wants to hang with mom and dad. So I love it, man. you know, that romantic candlelight dinner was the three of us, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, I'm it's an amazing age times. three, man. I got a 14 year old oh, and I remember every, every minute of his life. And, uh, yeah, we did some ships. Your daughter's going to be funny. I was just thinking one day you guys would be a restaurant and someone will bring a check at the end and she'll go, what's this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what's this? Just no clue. No. Yeah. Well, I've already got stories, but uh, let me jump back on track here sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, and finish up the mindset thing. Are there any books or coaching? Obviously, your coaching program sounds like one of those things that would be good. But off the top of your head, is there a book that you can recommend or a podcast that you can recommend or anything you, that you can recommend to help get somebody's mindset fixed starting today yeah. so they can continue to work forward? Yeah, more will come to me as we talk some more and I'll throw them in, but uh, right, what comes to bat right away is a book that is uh, rarely, if ever, more than an arm's reach away from me and it's called The War of Art. Okay, tell me about it. My gosh, it. this is a series of short essays by uh, Stephen Pressfield and it, its lead character, the protagonist, is a character called Resistance and every artist has dealt with every single thing in this book. So uh, this thing is dog-eared and beat up and old, and it's always uh, always on my desk because sometimes I just open it and read a random essay. But uh, that, that's a wonderful one because, uh, you know, we know what to do on stage. We spend our lives learning how to be uh, more proficient in the office because show business, two words. I always like to say business has eight letters, show has four, and they should really have that relationship of attention. Uh, yeah. So, and it's not what we're brought up to do. We're brought up to uh, talk about ourselves. It feels more natural to play from the place of ego. And um, as I said at the top of the call, it's very ineffective in getting a prospect to trust you. Yeah. So. How, do you, how do you sell yourself without coming off like a used car salesman? Yeah. Wow, I'd have to think how to come off like a used car salesman and then reverse it. Um, uh, yeah. How do you, uh, like, like anybody, you, we've all run into those people in our lives where they, they just, they'll, they'll sell you anything and you'll actually start to avoid that person because they'll always try to sell you a new thing, whether it's a multi-level marketing or it's a, or it's literally a used car, you know, and you walk away and you bought it, but you don't feel good. I just, I, I kind of get that picture with, um, 
with just with with certain people that I've dealt with yeah. and, and want to know, you know, how can you really push yourself hard without coming off like you need the sale, I guess. Yeah, the truth is you can't, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, I really prospects will call on the phone or they'll write an email and one of the questions will be how much what's your fee and I will tell you I promise you they don't want to ask it it's the least comfortable thing in the world for them to ask and somehow it's become a uh, an expectation or some comfort zone that we've agreed on I it's been at least 15 20 years before I've told an end client a price on the phone I would never in my life imagine doing that I always redirect the conversation back to their event. What do they want the audience to feel before, during, and after it? Who have they used in the past? What's the theme of the event? Uh, what locations are happening? Because I tell you, five of those five questions, and I got a pretty damn good idea of what their budget is for the event. Um, yeah. And and I'll know, you know, if they've used people who are in my price range in the past. I, I go, this is a great conversation. Then I will summarize that and they say, oh, we need to know the budget. And I say, look, I want to make sure that we're a fit. I'm going to summarize everything we've talked about. Uh, within 60 minutes, you'll have an email that has everything. Yes, including the price, uh, including the appearance fee. And use that to uh, talk to your committee. Weigh it with the other options you're considering. But more than anything, I want to make sure you guys get what you want out of this event. And the only way I can do that is by... Uh, hearing what you actually want and helping you to understand it because a lot of people have no idea. So many times people have told me, I've never thought about my event in this way. I've, I've gotten clarity, you know, just by talking to you. So at that point, you're not a used car salesman. At that point, you're a trusted advisor. And especially if uh, the budgets are way off, use that line I told you a minute ago. Don't ever compromise on your price. And I'm, so I'm not only don't compromise, but probably 90% of the people who are listening to this could stand to double their price. I mean, seriously, it's not 1986 anymore, you know? I, I, Let's look at prices because we all have uh, kind of this glass ceiling above us where we think that we're, our, maybe our birthday party show is only worth 350 bucks, and we want to make more than that, but we believe the market's only 350 Or, uh, you know, in the cruise ship industry, 25 to 3500 bucks is kind of that entry-level uh, glass ceiling, yeah. you know? And I know guys, um, some of my mentors have, have hit, you know, they were making five, six, seven a week. But that glass ceiling is still kind of there, and it's harder to negotiate with, for example, a cruise ship because they'll just flip the next page to the next guy who's available that week. So how do you break through your preconceived ideas of, of value and yeah. and raise that level? Okay, three words. Get a pencil. Fire your clients. You have to fire <laughs> some clients. You, it's impossible to take somebody who has that mindset of, you know, we have – uh, $2,500 for a corporate show, they're not my clients, you know, but what I will do is tell them uh, the, I can't work with them, I don't want to work with them and when either of us have to compromise. And I know so many people, I'll just hand this gig off to somebody, it's great. I've met hundreds of entertainers through my programs and I always send gigs those ways. Um, hmm. But the truth is, you know, every price, something like you're talking about the cruise ship, yeah, if you're in that market, you kind of probably have to play that game. The last ship I did was probably maybe 2000, let's see, my son was like four or five and he was born in 02, so it was probably 2007 or so, but Dan and I had two suites, we got 11,000 a week, we paid our agent, and you know, it was good, and you know, we were on in the big rooms with, uh, I know like, there's great, like Alan King was on with us, and uh, just holding courts with these comedy legends, you know, it was just amazing, uh, but you know, I know that's changed, I know they're not doing that anymore, because I've checked in with uh, Casino, who used to book us on those, they're like, nah, man, they, we don't do those shifts, you know, it's not that yeah. anymore. And I get that. That's fine. So, you know, you do have to play in the market, but when you want to branch out and you want to work even birthday parties, there's a, a guy named Andrew Smith, wonderful dude, uh, showbiz blueprint alumni who wrote a book called Thousand Dollar Birthday Parties. He blueprints it out exactly how he's gotten himself into that market exclusively. He doesn't do anything less than that. Um, mm. But you have to fire clients. You have to say, we're not right anymore. There's not, you know, as to use my parlance from earlier, there's, we're not a fit. And there are people who are definitely a fit for you. And there's clients who would never entertain the idea of having a $350 birthday party entertainer. Um, those people live in places like San Francisco and Beverly Hills and Los Angeles and, you know, the nice suburbs of Seattle. They don't want yeah. to think about a, uh, a face painter that costs $150 an hour. They want to think about one that's been on Skin Wars and, uh, you know, charges $1,500. That's who they want because that's, they got, they're driving Lexuses. And that's what they have in their driveway. And they don't want to... Uh, Back. So 
Buy your clients, hire new clients. How do you get your mindset to change from that? What's that breakthrough moment where you decide, I'm no longer this amount? I Because be, reality is that you probably, your act isn't going to change from the $2,500 shows to the $10,000 shows or from the $10,000 to the $50,000. So what is it that changes in somebody that makes them start yeah. getting those clients? It's a great question, Dave, because I mean, it's funny. If I think about my Renaissance Fair Act 1982 through 80, 86 at the uh, uh, King Richard's Fair or the Texas Renaissance Festival, yeah, it would be pretty funny to run an act of a $15,000 corporate show next to that video. They may not look all that much different. Um, <laughs> what does change is the mindset, the clothing, the uh, credits we build up over time, the slow credits that we build, the, uh, um, the accolades, the testimonials, the recommendations, the way we run our business, and all that feeds the mindset of, these are the shows I want, and I know they exist. And it's so funny, I guarantee you, most of the people listening to this have probably had one show that they just go, how the hell did that happen? How did I get that? How did I get that call? Everything was perfect. The audience, the lighting, the audio, there was a crew backstage, there were snacks in the green room, and, and you're like, and you can either say that was luck, now I'm back at work in Bozo's Comedy Club, or you can, and this happened to me in 1986, a guy came up to us at the Renaissance Festival and said, I'm organizing a four-day conference for Thrifty Drugstore, which is a big drugstore chain back in the 80s in Los Angeles. You guys ever MC events like that? I'm like, damn right we do. I'd never been out of tights. You know, <laughs> I had never been out of tights, but I knew enough to say that uh, MCing a corporate show for thrifties was gonna be a lot easier than this. Uh, the paycheck from that made my hand shake. I'd never seen that much money, even from a six-week Renaissance Festival. And uh, mm. that was a, a choice I made. From then on, I began focusing on corporate entertainment, and that was all I was really interested in. And got heavily into that, raised the price from 2,500 to five, to 10, I don't even think we stopped at 7,500. And every time we lost clients and we got new clients, we, we lost the ones that didn't pay that anymore and we were suddenly exposed to ones that wouldn't even entertain our old price. They, they, it wasn't interesting to them. How long did that time, that bell curve take? Or, 40 or years, was no, it, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's how we wanted to do it. It was, uh, I think we worked at those prices each for maybe a year or so. But it wasn't long. I know by the I know by the early '90s we were doing tons of opening acts for, you know, every celebrity imaginable. But in between all those dates were the uh, the corporate dates, and I remember well doing 10 k corporate dates in those days. And then uh, you know raising it up and trade shows. Trade shows are, are a great example. You don't look at the booths that have the companies that have the ten by ten booths. You start looking at the ones that have the, uh, you know, the the eighty by thirties, the the big configuration. The the ones that are the size of your home. And uh, yeah. those set up a stage and those you can do 15, 20 K a day from. And you know, maybe you give a discount for concurrent days, but uh, you know, so I said, and then we have guys like uh, Joel Bauer who's completely redesigned his, you know, moved the bar on his business. I know the last trade show I worked with him, he was, I think he was getting 50 or 60 K a day for uh, doing a trade show. So that was great. Jeez. I gotta pause Jeez. one minute. I, I'm sorry. No hey, worries. I'm back. So yeah. So there's yeah. guys who are uh, you know redefining the business, and there's guys who have made these incremental uh, changes and ended up on some pretty nice stages for that. Uh, I would tell everybody a huge mindset piece to do is to actually celebrate yourself going from a one to a two, and not fall into the easy trap of shame and guilt and uh, apathy because you can't go from a one to a ten. Uh, because that two will become your opportunity to launch to a three and then to a four and a five. Uh, any, you know, this is a long term business. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful business. Uh, you're not going to fool anyone into booking you, as I said earlier. Uh, but can you get yourself to congruently live a life that's from a, uh, a life in a business that goes from a one to a two over a few month period by making some small changes, um, by incorporating some systems, some automation, uh, focusing on a couple of key producers, uh, maybe a niche market that you have some connection to in your outside life. Maybe you were an engineer and, and now you're a magician. What engineering conferences are there out there in the world that you could maybe let those, uh, that Venn diagram overlap a little bit and find this sweet spot where uh, some alumni of, of Showbiz Blueprint are in there talking to uh, groups that they had a past life in. And it's quite amazing to, to look at it that way. Interesting. Interesting. My mind is blown right now just trying to uh, wrap my head around some of the things you're saying and, and just really putting that timeline of, of how over the course of just a handful of years, half, you know, two to five years going from 
two thousand dollar gigs to ten thousand and plus. Yeah. Uh, would Would you recommend that people, when they hit that new milestone, to not take anything under that again, or how do you keep somebody from going broke um, by they think they got it, but then uh, all of a sudden they're really not. Yeah. They're not there yet. How do they stay up there? You know, take care of business, you guys. I will uh, implore you to not go into debt to get bigger. Uh, establish yourself in a business. Be smart with your money. Read a book called Profit First. Good Lord. Don't run your business without reading a book called Profit First, please. It's the most revolutionary piece of writing on money management that's been written uh, this, maybe this or last century. It takes all the general accepted accounting principles turns them on their head and get yourself to where you can live a life and you have a budget that's actually meant for building your business um a budget that's meant for paying yourself uh a, a, a certain amount that goes to outsourcing live out of these accounts that profit first teaches about and then there's a time when it just makes sense to move your business up companies like google um Tesla, they're not guessing when to make these next moves. They're doing it strategically. And we should be living that way as entertainers as well. Uh, living gig to gig, you're not ready to raise your price yet. Establish yourself, get system in pl systems in place that allow you to scale your time so that you're living in the zone of genius, pleasure, brilliance, and not wasting your time going, oh, I need to write to an email to a guy who just wrote me, how much do I cost? It's like, no, that's pull down a menu, hit the button that says inquiry, Get them on the phone, have conversations that are meaningful, build the relationship. Don't talk about money on the phone. Follow up with them in, a, in a, an email, a customized landing page, however you choose to do it. Uh, one of the many things I teach in Showbiz Blueprint is how to build customized landing pages that actually connect and buyers care about. Uh, and goodness, get that stuff scalable. Start to increment your price a little bit and then say, hey, next year, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna double my price. I'm gonna aim for this market. Here's the assets I have in place. Um, yeah, don't go broke making changes, man. Uh, build your assets so strong. Be smart with your money in the market you're actually working right now. Um, living on a ship, I, I know expenses can be very low. So it's, I always think that's an amazing time to, uh, to start yeah. doing something with money like in, in that range. Yeah. Can you um, go back to, to Profit First? Who wrote that book? Do you know offhand? Yeah, Michael. He's got a strange last name. Muskoskowitz or something. Uh, <laughs> okay. And it's on my Kindle. So uh, here, I'll uh, tell you real fast. Profit First. Uh, Michael Michalowicz. Uh, yeah. Okay. M-I-C-H-A-L-O-W-I-C-Z. Great book. Okay. And can you break down something, a little bit of like uh, what the percentages look like for... A rough example of like, okay, for every hundred bucks you make, you should be putting ten dollars towards props. You should be putting ten dollars towards your vehicle wear and tear. You should be doing twenty percent to save. Like, how do you have a, a rough? Froze. Do you have a rough breakdown of how that that might look? Yeah, we just came back. Michael does such a good, good job of it in his book. I'd hate to even touch on it, but he talks about the four accounts that you should really have in your business: uh, an owner account, uh, back to the business account, a tax account. So you're not hit with that uh, nightmare ever, which in the, I tell you, there's a blessing and a curse to making a lot of money as an entertainer. Um, right. And especially I've been learning it doing uh, online business and coaching, but I have almost no expenses. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it gets creative. So having a tax account is a really big piece of this and being smart with the money. So, uh, you know, what do you need to, to live to uh, sustain yourself to sleep well at night? It's in a wonderful litmus test of what kind of money do I need to make to close my eyes and fall asleep easily? versus uh, waking up early in the morning. And I've heard so much of this stuff from entertainers and it makes me so sad because it's a uh, very common mistakes of having a great gig and overspending instead of finding a level place where you can live at a, at a certain level. So, you know, out of a hundred bucks, what are your expenses cost? What expenses can you, how can you live? Here's the basic principle of profit first and uh, this will make people run and buy this book because it's so damn brilliant. Income versus profit equals expenses. Whoosh! You know, that's, that's kind of, because how many people listening to this are running their business with income minus expenses equals profit? All of, everyone, I'll save you from thinking about it. Everyone is, and it's wrong. It's, it's damn wrong, it's, and it's the way we've been taught. Uh, hmm. You know, whatever, uh, we have to pay ourselves first, and that's a very easy thing to say, but this book breaks down a blueprint for doing it. 
Um, I'll have to look that up. I just recently got a bank account through simple.com. Oh, neat, yeah. And, and I love it because you can create goals and folders. And so, uh, you know, I've got a pretty aggressive goal, uh, really aggressive financial goal. And I, it's happening without me even thinking about it. I just set what it is and it, it automatically every day puts that money into a separate account. Oh, I love I look that. At my account and it says you have, you know, safe spending of $1,000 and I might have 40000 in the account, but it's all, it's all claimed and it'll mail your bills automatically. So all of that stuff, especially when you're out on a ship that's so difficult to take care of and handle, is handled through Simple. Um, and it's, it's it's a brilliant online banking system that, oh, that uh, I, haven't, I haven't read Profit First, I'm going to now, but uh, just a tip for people who are looking for something instantly, they can go do that as well. Love it. And um, I just brought up that yeah. website, I'll dig into this. I love having yeah. uh, different accounts that are, have different goals, and, and I never did that before. Uh, Digging into uh, Mike's book there, but it's uh, it's quite simple. I've you know been fairly smart with money, but uh, there's always room for growth. You know, I and I, I love feeling like I'm climbing up towards that ten area. You know, and maybe I'm at a five now, but uh, I don't beat myself up about it. I tell you, uh, years of making great money, I uh, things could be radically different either way, higher or lower right now. So I feel pretty good that uh, I live with a 180 degree view of the Sierra Mountains in a small town, and uh, mm. it's a good thing. And that your shoulders and arms are all back in the right spots. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That that took about six months. Funny story about that though. I'm in the hand therapist after the surgery, after this pin was in my shoulder and I couldn't feel my nerves. And and she has this bucket of raw kidney beans and there's like eight quarters in there. She goes, We're gonna try and get the quarters out today, Barry. And I feel one. I barely feel my finger feeling was all gone. She goes, That's awesome, you got one. She gets so excited and I pulled out my phone and I brought up a YouTube video of me doing five juggling torches. And I said, I never really talked to you about what I do, but I showed her the video and I said, this is what I need to get back to doing, not finding a quarter in a, in a bucket of beans. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I see why you kind of are always a little sad when you come in here. <laughs> I got dreams of like throwing fire torches around and, you know, uh, doing that stuff. Oh, oh amazing. Yeah, so we well, uh, we're approaching the 45 minute or hour mark roughly. Cool. Um, so I want to start kind of getting ready to wrap up here. Uh, I'm kind of going through a list of ideas and thoughts. Uh, it sounds like mostly what you have done in your in your career has been the corporate gigs. That seems to be kind of the biggest thing to get you your uh, pad your bank account or am I wrong? Is it Has it been? No, it's been good. There was a great market back in the late 80s and early 90s, which doesn't exist anymore. But I tell you, I had so much fun doing uh the opening acts from Patti LaBelle, Robin Williams, we toured with for six years as an opening act, Billy Crystal, Howie Mandel, who always toured by Learjet, so that was very fun. We got Lear, a lot of oh, Learjet cool. miles. And, uh, but, you know, that market, casinos realized they could uh, uh, have a 30-minute shorter show and get people back into the casino. So, you know, this business shifts like crazy, Dave, and you have to be uh, kind of in touch with what the market needs, not what you need, not, what, uh, not leading with your ego. Bill Hurz wrote a great book, uh, which I have over there on my shelf, uh, Check Your Ego at the Door, a great book by a wonderful magician, Bill Hurz. Um, he talks about that. You know, it's, 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 it's uninteresting to uh, prospects what we do or what we've done. Yeah, it's great to back it up. Let them find it, though. Don't lead the conversations with that. Lead conversations with uh, how can I be of help with you, whether that it involves you ever giving me a check or not. How can I care about your event more than you care about it? Hmm. Put your customers first. Big. I love it. I love it. Really big. Well, we'll wrap this up with uh, my final question, and that is what's one action that people can take right now, this day or this week, to get them closer to their goal of maybe uh, six figures, maybe seven figures a year entertaining? Yeah. I think, I think that first step. Yeah. I think reviewing this conversation might, again, and uh, here's, a, here's a great tip. Every time you say that's a good idea, get that out of your brain. Stop the recording and write down two or three action steps you're going to take towards that right now. That will move you forward. I, we've talked about enough in this uh, conversation to uh, get you going. But really, one thing you can do is, and this takes a little bit of work, but slip on a different pair of lenses and take a look at your website, your marketing material, through the eyes of someone and assume this. Assume they're looking at it on this thing. They have somebody calling them from the other room and they have about a minute to get into this. Look at your website through that pair of lenses and say, where does it fall flat and where does it shine? 
And where it shines, amplify that. And where it falls flat, fix it. Uh, because that's how so much of your audience is looking at your website. I use Google Analytics on all my websites. And I can, uh, sometimes if I put an ad out or I do an emailing to a, a list of 10,000 people in my sugar free niche or something, I'll just kick on Google Live Analytics uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because it's damn fun. It's like a dopamine rush just to see your thing go from <laughs> four people who are on it to all of a sudden blow up to like 300, you know, that are looking at it. But that scale is always 85, 90, 95, 100% people looking on mobile phones. That's what we're doing now. So if they're having to search through type or try to make something bigger uh, to read it, you're done. Uh, the game's over. So slip on that lens. Look at your marketing. Look at the words, the copy. Can I get an idea from the headline? Um, is your video easily accessible on the website, maybe even on the front page? Um, and is the story about me, the prospect, or is the story about you? Because if it's about you, I don't care. I'm really not going to read it if I'm at a stoplight or I'm in a meeting or i am got my kid calling from the other room. But if that first sentence or that first headline tells me that, man, this, these are a couple of guys who actually care about my event more than I care about it, and Google says they're great, and uh, um, you know, the Wall Street Journal says they're great, and all these there's social proof. There's a, a something they can see quickly. Uh, there's authority. Does it have that Love stuff? It. Do I feel that in a minute on your website? Because uh, if they stay on your website in a minute, you've got a pretty damn good website, actually. <laughs> Man, well, these tips have been golden. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. I, I appreciate it. Um, obviously, the, the purpose of this isn't to get people to sign up for your coaching, but after this, they're going to want it. So how can they reach you? How can they take your coaching or learn more about it? Yeah. Um, give me your information here, if you don't mind. So sure. They can, they can uh, touch. There's a website that is not for sale anymore. The product isn't, but there's an amazing seven-day free course on there called GetMoreCorporateGigs.com. Uh, GetMoreCorporateGigs, one long hairy word, dot com. And... Uh, and then also showbizblueprint.com. That's a group coaching program I run, run once a year, and a lot of people apply to it. And uh, I take 25 people through a 10-week uh, rebooting of the DNA about uh, running a business as an entertainer. It's, it's uh, quite an extraordinary uh, experience. I love it. And when does that course normally take place? It's in the spring every year. Okay. Great time for some people and a terrible time for others and, and a great time for me. So that's why it runs. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, when I, it's when I can do. It's when I fit it in every year. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, and uh, yeah. everybody go check out his his website. And uh, yeah, stay yeah. in touch, man. And I feel free to uh, reach out to me on uh, Facebook or any of the normal social media channels. Uh, you find me all over those things under mostly under my slave name Raspini R A S P Y N I, a word awesome. that was invented before Google, which makes it very easy to ego surf. Very easy. <laughs> Cool, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great to meet you, man. The internet the internet uh, on the ships has come a long way. This was wonderful. Thanks. No, it, it's only at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m.? That's when you have to It's go. funny. You saw me look around, and it was actually a security guard walking through doing his runs, and he gave me the look like, you're not supposed to be up still, but yeah, they're cool here. Yeah. You're like, guest <laughs> entertainer card. Go away from me. Yeah. It's the best right? of all worlds. Yeah. Yeah.